up a little. So what decks died back then? Well, we have Shadals and Necros that died back in the previous ban list because, well, Shadals lost Construct and Necros lost Shrit. So with Shrit gone, they lost their Sentry combo piece, the one piece that searched stuff, and acted as the full tribute fodder and, well, Shadals lost their main boss monster, Construct. Without Construct, they are very limited on their plays and the fusions, they're just, there's no equivalent to Construct, basically. We lost your radar, Javi. You got eyes on the tornado? But what did survive? Let's start off with some of the structure deck. We have Masters of Pendulum. We have the Pendulum Magicians. Pendulum Magicians gave us the uh, generic scale 8 which of Dragon Pit Magician and give us a lot of consistency too with like Pendulum Call giving you the double surge, basically filling up your skills really quickly, Wisdom Eye filling up your extra deck very very quickly and this made it viable to play level 7 monsters that normally were not playable back in the day like Mist Valley, Apex Avian for instance, that card shot up in price like crazy because it had the ability to negate stuff like CDI just by returning itself or any uh, win monster, Mist Valley monster back to the hand. And this could also interrupt any effect, so it could be like a Moon Mirror Shield activating and they can negate that, destroy it, bounce itself back to hand, keep going off, and then paired with a lot of other monsters like Match Spectre Kirin and Mechanical Hound, but you basically had the one of the best decks that shut down your opponent. So this is basically one of the eras where making unbreakable boards was one of the key plays, and uh, this deck would eventually evolve much, much further. Next up, we have the first wave of Magic Spectres. Coming back from 2015, this is one of the survivors as well. Uh, Magic Spectres definitely gained a lot of momentum. They were the first deck that had some overall protection of destruction and targeting for all their monsters. So that was a generic trait that they had and they shared. But the most popular monsters for this deck during this time of the year was only Bunbuku and the Fox. And uh, we don't have the Toad yet, so. We'll get into more of that stuff later. And Kirin, these are the main monsters, and they were splashed into uh, Performage decks. And this is when Performage, uh, I guess they weren't at their strongest at the time, but they were not bad. Combined with a like, Trick Clown, Damage Jugglers, all that good stuff, this is the deck to go to. And um, what happened was Ignister and Luster wasn't exactly very popular at the time. That's why they were so, so cheap in the beginning. And then they eventually spiked up like crazy. We know why they spiked up. And we'll get to that in a bit. The one deck that did live for, I would say, the longest in 2016, uh, I guess a bit short of BA, but Cosmos. Cosmos was definitely one of the decks that were super, super strong. Probably because they had some of the most broken ships. They weren't broken, they were not exactly fair either, but they are very strong ships because they had one of the strongest uh, recurring play like from Cosmo Town retrieving most of your banished stuff, so banishing was not an option. And during then, they played the Farm Girl OTK. Well, if they get one Farm Girl off and they hit you, you're basically dead. With Triple Dark Destroyer, that was very hard to play against. 
and Dark Destroy was immune to targeting and uh, any kind of destruction based effect would trigger its effect to summon out a lower level ship or pilot so that kind of made them very hard to deal with but Bosch changed all that so this is the era of January when Bosch came out they gained two really really powerful things they gained Tin Can and they also gained Cosmojo. Now Cosmojo and Tin Can were regarded as weaker cards when they were released, so that was kind of interesting. But then the playstyle changed when they just go Tin Can Turbo, just play with Call the Haunters, Oasis of Dragon Souls, let your opponent deal with your problems. And living, letting like a Tin Can live was like one of the worst things ever. And the deck actually changed quite a bit. There was different variants, there were Artifact Cosmos, there's Demise Cosmos, like a lot of more, more and more cards came out. And the deck kept on evolving with the new sets, which made it last so much longer than I ever have anticipated. Another deck that gained quite a boost, uh, Cyframes was actually pretty interesting, I would say. Uh, they came out uh, last year, but this deck was like one of the counter decks. Not a lot of people like playing against it because it was a super reactive deck. It was You can consider it as anti-meta, for instance, but uh, Cyframe Lord Omega was definitely one of the craziest boss monsters that everyone wanted because of and, uh, Although Cyframes definitely weren't the best at making Omega, they can definitely utilize like the strongest line of traps and that field spell that led you Synchro. Just made it very awkward to play against them because the only way to play against them is do very, very little and don't let them counter you, or else you're gonna start, you know, facing punishment. Let's talk about acorns. Everyone knows it as that. Then invest your spare change. But how did it start? Where did it, where did this idea? Atlantean Mermails. This deck just won't die. It's lived forever, like from the Dragon Ruler era all the way till now. Except that it kind of died off quite a bit because, well, the game and the meta state change. Where playing a one for one is not even good enough anymore. You could say you needed to plus off of your opponent, but this deck didn't do that. Instead, it did something better. It decided to break boards. It was the deck that broke the board. And with the release of the Atlantean Prince, another Bosch release card. This card, we needed this way earlier, but this was insane because this was a one card combo. This card plus an instant fusion can easily guarantee over 10,000 damage. And that's why they came out. And with Norden, with instant fusion, and the Atlantean Dragoons being at two, this deck just wrecked anyone it always chose to go second and as long as your opponent did not make a dweller on you first turn you were good to go you were going to wreck face easily take that game and with a kaiju being with a water kaiju specifically being uh one of the cards you can access you can also act as a combo piece for trip like discard fodder for your megalos and everything the amount of damage sheer damage that this deck can do allowed it to be one of the best decks of 2016. now okay now 2016 talking about bosch it would not be you know, proper if I did not talk about this deck, Pepe. Whatever you want to call it. Is it Pe Perform Age Pendulums? Perform Age Performer Pals? P Pals? I have no idea. Like, many people came up with their own names because uh, Lusters, they were the Pendulum series. Everything just said Pendulum. Just call it Pepe. Broken ass Pepe. This is the one where you made the most broken boards and actually triggered Konami to make an emergency adjusted list for this particular deck. But at full power. 